This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Because of the intermittency of renewable energy sources like wind and solar, storing large amounts of power is a necessity for the decarbonization of our energy system. However, we still don't have enough batteries to compensate for the renewable energy slumps across the planet. When thinking about the biggest utility scale energy storage installations, a huge cylindrical lithium ion battery powered light bulb probably goes off above your head. But what if I told you that the world's largest battery taps into water rather than lithium? Can an old technology, even one that's still learning new tricks, be the answer? Let's see if we can come to a decision on this. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. Not too long ago, one of my patrons asked me about the current progress here in the US towards building out enough large-scale lithium-ion battery systems to cover our energy needs. Now, I knew that Tesla has been ramping up megapack installations, but their efforts alone are far from meeting American storage demand, let alone the global one. Another thing to consider is that most lithium-ion facilities are for real-time peak shaving rather than long-term storage. Many of the longer-term storage technologies I've covered on this channel are still in the pilot phase. And when I started to dive into the largest battery systems on the planet, I was surprised by what I found. I was aware that pumped hydro storage made up the largest energy storage facilities today, but what I didn't know was by how much and that they're still developing. This old technology is still making advances and maintaining its worldwide lead for energy storage. They're even building them out in the desert, which really <laughs> surprised me. Now, I know you're feeling pumped up, so let's dip our toes into the water to the energy storage pool. Now, according to the International Hydropower Association, pumped hydro or pumped storage hydropower accounts for 94% of the world's energy storage capacity. In comparison, lithium ion and other technologies are just a few drops. So how does pumped hydro actually work? Well, basically you just need two interconnected reservoirs with a big gap in elevation between them. You can use existing lakes or even decommissioned mines. However, pumped hydro's energy density is over 400 times lower than lithium ion batteries. To compensate for that, you need a high head or a large elevation change, which is the distance traveled by the water from the upper pool to the turbine. Generally, the higher the head, the more energy you can store per volumetric unit of water. One problem is that you can't have high heads everywhere, which is one of pumped hydro's limitations. However, Re-Energize is trying to water down this issue head on. The UK-based startup is using R19, it's a fluid that's two and a half times denser than water, and by doing so, they reduce the required vertical elevation by a factor of two and a half times. Other than a sufficiently high head, a pumped hydro plant will need reversible pump turbines. During daytime when electricity demand and price are high, you let water stored in the upper reservoir fall down by gravity. While flowing down along a pipe, water will pass through a turbine generating electricity, which is how you produce power in a conventional hydroelectric plant. And during the nighttime, when demand is lower, the pumped hydro turbine can turn from a generator into a pump, moving water from the lower basin to the upper one, recharging the supply for the next big demand. Power is stored as water's gravitational potential energy, and is ready to be used when you need to shave off peaks of the demand curve. You can have two types of pumped hydro design. In an open loop configuration, the upper basin is continuously connected to a river downstream, so you'll need to build a dam to create a lower pool. Alternatively, in a closed loop scheme, the two reservoir system is isolated from the hydrological network. As you can probably imagine, closed loop pumped hydro poses a lower environmental risk for the surrounding ecosystem. So who's wearing the largest battery crown in operation on the planet? With a power output of around three gigawatts, Bath County facility currently holds the record. The Virginia-based plant has been running for nearly 30 years, and it's also the 10th largest power plant in the US, producing more energy than the Hoover Dam. To find gravity across a 1,200 foot head, which is about 366 meters, its six reversible turbines can move about 13 million gallons, or about 59 million liters of water from the lower to the upper reservoir in around 11 hours. What's even cooler is that it can be up and running in just 15 minutes, which is much quicker than what fossil fuel plants take to ramp up. However, it won't be long before Bath County loses its crown. After seven years of work and a nearly $2 billion investment, last December, China switched on the Fenning Pump Storage Hydropower Plant for the Beijing Winter Olympics. Once all of its 12 300 megawatt turbines are operational, the facility will reach a 3.6 gigawatt power output, hitting two records with one pump, surpassing Bath County by installed power output and being the pumped hydro station with the highest number of turbines in the world. This will give the plant more flexibility in the level of energy that it can handle. For the time being, only two generators are online. China is planning to make another splash in the near future the State Grid Corporation of China, the SGCC, just leaked a plan to increase its total pumped storage power output from the current 26.3 gigawatts to 100 gigawatts by 2030. While pumped hydro is the largest and most common type of energy storage, it's not the only game in town. You can't store energy out of thin air, right? You could press your luck, though, with thicker air. 
Besides pumped hydro, China is also revamping a 30-year-old storage concept, compressed air energy storage. In fact, the world's first compressed air plant was installed in Germany in 1978. The way you generate electricity is roughly the same as pumped hydro, except that you're using compressed air instead of water to drive the turbine. As for storage, the system uses the extra energy from the grid to power a compressor and then to bank the pressurized air in an underground chamber. After years of design optimization, in 2016, Chinese researchers released a 10 megawatt advanced compressed air pilot plant. Their technological advancements made the system 60% efficient. In comparison, conventional compressed air's efficiency can be as low as 40%. To achieve this result, scientists introduced a thermal unit that captures and recirculates the heat generated during air compression. Heat recovery is a technique I've touched on in quite a few videos recently. Also, they devised more efficient compression and heat management systems. Since then, researchers upscaled their design to a 100 megawatt prototype, which was connected to the grid last October. Providing the daily electricity consumption of 3,000 Chinese homes, this system is supposed to reach a 70% efficiency. And while they keep pressing forward, their compressed air efficiency is still lower than competing technologies like pumped hydro and lithium ion batteries, which are between 80 and 90% respectively. On the other hand, it may be a safer option. According to scientists, their compressed air works at medium pressures, so there is only a limited risk for explosion. This is a little reassuring compared to the world's largest lithium-ion battery melting twice over the last five months. The Chinese aren't the only ones storing energy out of thick air. Hydrostore has already piloted two compressed air plants in Ontario. And last November, the Canadian company requested the California regulators to build two larger facilities with a power output of up to 500 megawatts and an initial investment of up to nearly $1 billion. Now, having said that, compressed air may be a more worthy deal compared to lithium-ion batteries in the short term. In fact, doubling the plant power output from 250 to 500 megawatts halves the per kilowatt hour cost. And to be more specific, when considering a 500 megawatt facility, we're looking at $100 per kilowatt hour, which is 50% cheaper than lithium-ion batteries of a similar capacity. Also, when considering the improvement of the transmission system as a use case, compressed air has a much lower levelized cost of storage than both lithium ion and pumped hydro technologies. If their application is accepted, Hydrostore touts that these plants could be ready by 2026 and last for about 50 years. While pumped hydro plants have a similar or even longer lifespan, lithium ion battery installations would require proper maintenance or even unit replacement to turn 40. So how does the Hydrostore solution work? Well, during the storage step, they use off-peak or excess renewable power to run a compressor and inject pressurized air into a newly dug water-filled cavern as deep as 1,000 feet, or about 300 meters. The compressed air displaces water, pushing it towards a surface-level closed-loop reservoir, which helps to maintain the system at a constant pressure during operation, which makes the process more efficient. Also, like the Chinese plant, there's a thermal management unit that recovers the waste heat generated by the compression step and stores it in a tank. When it's time to deliver the energy, they send water back to the underground chamber to release the air, which is mixed with the stored heat. The hot air then drives a turbine, which generates electricity. The discharge step can last up for 12 hours, which is much longer compared to lithium ion batteries, typically running for about four hours. However, reusing waste heat, the Hydrostore round trip efficiency is still capped at 60%. In terms of logistics, compressed air systems like Hydrostore are more flexible than pumped hydro because they're not limited to sloped landscapes. While it's true that Hydrostore will need to store compressed air in an underground cavern, the company CEO says that the plant is versatile enough to be built on about 70% of the planet. Water and air are two classical elements for energy storage, but what about the other element that I've been touching on a little bit? Lithium ion. Lithium ion batteries are so ubiquitous that we would have expected it to be the star of this video. However, despite the hype, it's just an extra for the time being. Backing up Moss Landing Natural Gas Power Plant from December 2020, the largest lithium ion battery energy storage system can only dispatch about 300 megawatts. This is 12 times less than what Fenyang Pumped Hydro will deliver at full scale. On the other hand, Vistra Energy, the facility developer, is looking to expand its power output up to 1.5 gigawatts. Now, as it stands, the plant features 4,500 stacked battery racks, including 22 modules each. While pumped hydro still covers most of our storage capability, lithium-ion batteries are catching up. As of 2017, lithium-ion accounted for around 90% of new large-scale chemical battery storage additions. In fact, the electrochemical battery is expected to supercharge its potential up to 28 gigawatts per year by 2028. So why is that? Well, when comparing the levelized cost of energy for the two technologies, lithium-ion batteries are more cost-effective only for shorter durations of about four hours. That's why they're the optimal solution for fast response grid stability. Lithium-ion batteries are the newer technology versus pumped hydro systems, which means they'll likely experience a much greater LCOE reduction thanks to technological innovation and economies of scale. 
The bottom line is pumped hydro has mostly matured and has less room for improvements, giving lithium ion batteries a chance to catch up. You have to remember that the price of battery packs has decreased by 89% over the last 10 years. Also, a recent study forecasted that their levelized cost of storage to be lower than pumped hydro and compressed air for most of the stationary applications from 2030. So it's fair to assume that they'll be playing a pivotal role in balancing our energy grids. But this is where pumped hydro shows that it still has some cards up its sleeve. New pumped hydro installations are flooding unexpected areas of the Earth, like deserts. This past February, R Plus Hydro submitted an application to build Nevada's first pumped hydro storage facility. Apparently, White Pine County ticks all the boxes for hosting pumped storage hydropower, like a 2,000 foot or 610 meter vertical drop over a short distance, plenty of space to create two new large reservoirs and a nearby source of water to fill them up. After completing a feasibility study, the company could start building their one gigawatt closed loop pumped hydro plant in 2025. And just to give you a sense of scale, the White Pine storage capacity would cover about one eighth of Nevada's peak power demand on a hot summer day. One eighth of the demand includes all of the air conditioners in Las Vegas, where temperatures can soar over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or about 38 degrees Celsius. So there is a substantial amount of power released by this project. Now, once up and running, this water-based battery will supply electricity for the local community for up to eight hours. White Pine is not the only project of its kind though in the US. To water down California blackouts, Eagle Crest Energy is developing a more sustainable 1.3 gigawatt plant in Eagle Mountain. In this case, instead of digging two new pools, the project developer will fill up two abandoned iron open pits placed at different elevations in the Mojave Desert. On top of that, this plant will also use surplus renewables from a nearby two gigawatt solar farm to pump water from the lower mine to the upper one. After being fully charged, this storage oasis will flush green energy for up to 18 hours. However, this won't happen until 2027. Beyond the arid Southwest US, pumped hydro plants are popping up in the Arabic desert as well. As of last December, the Dubai Electricity and Water Authority had completed 35% of their 250 megawatt pumped hydro plant. With an investment of around $400 million, this will be the first facility built in the Gulf region and may go into service in 2024. While not being a desert, mega scale pumped hydro facilities are progressing in Asia, Europe, and the UK as well. Now, if we want to decarbonize our grids, we need huge energy storage capability for managing the variability of renewables like solar and wind. While lithium ion batteries have dominated the conversation, the old kit on the block is still showing us that it can hit our needs today at a price we can afford. Pumped hydro is still wearing the largest battery crown and it makes up most of our energy storage portfolio. It's not a knock against lithium ion or other tech like compressed air, which have a bright future, but let's not get caught up in the newest, latest, best. Sometimes it's the older ideas that can help pave the way for a brighter future. If you'd like to learn more about the science behind hydropower and compressed air energy storage, I'd strongly recommend checking out Brilliant. They have fantastic interactive courses that have helped me get better at understanding the physics behind all of this, which includes interactive courses and topics that range from electricity and magnetism to logic. They've got something for everybody. The classical mechanics course ties in directly to some of the concepts from this video. It takes you through the basic principles of physics like kinetic energy, conservation of energy, and the forces in fluids and pressure. Ever wonder how fast you can take a turn on a banked road? Well, classical mechanics has your back. I had a good time going through this one. All of the concepts are taught through fun and interactive challenges and help you understand the why of something, not just the how. It helps you to develop your intuition, which is my absolute favorite part about Brilliant. Go to brilliant.org undecided to sign up for free, and also the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership. Thanks to Brilliant and to all of you for supporting the channel. So are you still undecided? What do you think about leaning into older technology like pumped hydro for solving our energy needs? Jump in the comments and let me know. And if you have knowledge of this or if you work in the industry, please share your experience so we can learn more together. And thanks as always to my patrons, all of your direct support really does help with producing these videos and reducing my dependence on the almighty YouTube algorithm. And speaking of which, if you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I've linked to right here and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you think I've earned it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.